Hello! As well as the big new features in ZMAX 13 release 2, we've added several smaller features that I think users are going to love, particularly people who work in classic lens design, where a lot of usability features are, are very important. I wanted to show you some of my favourite uh, new features that have just been added, and most of these have been added directly under customer request, either by sending an email to ZMAX support at radiantzmax.com, or by uh, requesting it on our forum. Okay, so the first feature I'd like to show you here is a much requested feature that allows multiple surfaces of a zoom system to be ignored at one time. What I have here is a zoom lens, three configuration. And let's just imagine that in this configuration, uh, which happens to be configuration 1, I didn't actually want this group of elements to appear at all. Well, I can handle that with multiple IGNR operands, but it gets to be a little bit tedious. Uh, and we've added a new capability that allows us to ignore a range of surfaces easily. Now, the range of surfaces that we're going to ignore is going to be from surface 9 through to surface 15. And I want to ignore them only in configuration 1, which is this configuration. And I also want to refocus the lens after I have removed these lenses. So here's how we do it. I go to the multi-configuration editor. I just press insert to give me a new line. And I double click on the multi-config operand. That's the existing ignore operand, but what I want is ignore multiple. And I'm going to start from surface 9 to surface 15. And when I do that, nothing appears to happen because the default, of course, is that the surfaces are not ignored. But if I now just go to, surf to configuration number 1 and just type 1, then you'll see that those surfaces have been greyed out in the editor uh, and they've disappeared from this configuration only. If I now just want to refocus the lens, then all I need to do is go to the thickness of surface number 8 and do Tools, Design, Quick Adjust and say that I want to adjust the thickness of surface 8 for best spot size. I press Adjust and that just brings this design into focus. And so here is my um, uh, zoom lens, which has only got half the elements in configuration one, as it has in the other two configurations. And it's done very, very easily with the ignore multiple operand in the multi-configuration editor. Next, I'd like to show you a, a really neat improvement in the Visual Optimizer. And the Visual Optimizer was introduced a couple of editions ago. Um, under the design option, Visual Optimization. And it's here really just to, to let you play with the variables by hand and to see what effect changing variables has on uh, an optical system. Now, if you have a system like this, which is a, a, you know, a fairly well-designed lens, then what you'll find is that if you change almost anything here in this well-designed lens, that the lens simply responds by going out of focus, because anything that you make a change to you know, will, will change the lens. So what we've done here instead, I'm not making the back uh, thickness a, a variable because I'm going to refocus with that. I have an F number solve here that maintains the lens at F5. And I'm just going to select this option here, quick focus, spot size radial, relative centroid. And as I adjust parameters now, you can see that the lens is refocusing here in this column as I make the adjustments. The F number solve maintains me at F5. The, th the uh, change of the thickness means I'm always at best focus. And so this gives me a more meaningful way of just running quickly through a design, making changes, and seeing what effect the change has got after compensation by a back focal shift.
And if you think of this in terms of tolerancing and having a, a back focus uh, adjuster, of course, it makes perfect sense. So the quick focus will work with the radial spot size, the RMS wave front, uh, and the X and Y spots for cylindrical systems as well. And it just helps to keep the design in focus whilst you're making uh, design changes elsewhere in the system. The next thing I'd like to show you is some new optimization operands that are particularly helpful for classical imaging design. The first is to do with the size of a blank needed to make an A-sphere. If you're making a spherical lens, then it's relatively straightforward to estimate the size of the blank that you need based on either the edge or the center thicknesses. However, when you have a lens like this, which is pretty strongly aspherical, the blank size that you need turns out to be the size that you require to capture from here to here. And that's not something that's immediately you know, easy to get. It's not something that we report you know, as part of the normal data for manufacturing the, uh, the lens. So we've added a BLTH operand for blank thickness. And the way it works is as follows. If I just type the BLTH operand, ZMAX inserts it, and I'll just hide everything that we're not actually using. And I'm going to ask for the surface from surface number one to the following surface. These codes let us do Y slices, X slices, or both slices. And if I just double click here, you'll see that I'm getting a blank thickness of 0.817, although the thick lens itself has a center thickness of only 0.3. And this is invaluable for a number of reasons. First of all, when you come to manufacture uh, this lens, it's useful to know what the smallest blank is that you need in order to be able to create this lens. Also, during optimization, uh, you may actually have a piece of glass in mind uh, that the lens is going to be manufactured from. And so you can use this as a constraint in optimization just as you do with anything else. And ZMAX will then give you uh, a design that can be manufactured within the size constraints of the blanks you have available. The other really cool new operands that we've added are used for constraining minimum and maximum ray angles over a range of surfaces. And this is very useful when it comes to desensitizing a design uh, to tolerances, because as the ray angles of uh, incidence and excidence get larger, the lens becomes more susceptible to tilt and decenter type errors. So we have these operands here, minimum real uh, ray uh, angle of excidence and minimum uh, real ray angle of incidence and also a corresponding maximum for these two operands. And these let you constrain a range of surfaces such that the ray angles have to be within some limits that, that you define. And it's a great help in desensitizing a design to tilt and uh, decenter aberrations or, or perturbations.